welcome back to They Did What, your source for the internet's craziest, most entertaining stories where I go over them, analyze them, and most certainly make fun of them. Today, I'm doing part two to the story I covered earlier, which was titled, My wife that wants a divorce is angry that I'm moving out. Am I the a-hole? And the video was, Wife wants divorce to find out who she is, etc., etc. And guys, as you all recall, because I get the majority of you saw this earlier, that's about the guy who's like late 30s, married, and now know where his wife want to get a divorce to find herself, find her own path, take care of things herself, blah, blah, blah. And it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. The guy literally gave her everything to make her happy, and of course she was miserable, just like a, a spoiled kid. And throughout the whole story, he's doing things to end the marriage, even though he doesn't want to, move out, all that, and she's freaking out about that. He's offering her money to start over. She's freaking out about that. There's no making her happy. And you're gonna, you all recall, it was discovered that she actually is bipolar. And just like people that are bipolar, they oftentimes don't want to admit they have a problem, don't want to be on the medication, uh, don't want to go to therapists because the therapists are all wrong, not them, nothing wrong with them. And all sorts of crazy behavior. But also, this guy really enabled her behavior. This guy is your classic nice guy who, I, I made it clear, a chunk of the reason she was behaving the way she is is because of how weak he acts. Women don't respect weak men. That's the common thing in all the stories I've covered in the four years I've been on YouTube. And this guy, is just he just doesn't get it. So I'm going to go through part two here. We're going to get more in-depth about him, her, the origins of their relationship, that type of thing here, to answer some questions that I certainly had, as well as many of you, about this whole situation. And you, again, you all recall the lessons here about <clears throat> don't get involved with crazy. Don't try to argue and reason with crazy. It doesn't work. You know, and they say never argue with a drunk or a fool, but this guy keeps doing that. And I get he's hurt and heartbroken and all that, but... She has a history of this, as, as uh, he mentioned, history being in therapy and all that. Comes from a family with money, so I just think she's a spoiled brat princess and uh, was never told no. So, it continues on with his story. He says, uh, she approached me this morning. She apologized for the way she treated me yesterday. Oh, how nice. She says she thinks it's better that I do move out and that she thinks that she, she isn't good for me. I didn't say much and just agreed with her. When I started to agree with her, she started to backtrack and started to get mad at me. <laughs> she comes out, apologizes, says he thinks he ought to move out, which he knows he should, and says she, she doesn't think he's good for him. He agrees with her, and now she's mad at him. Right? Now, one could say it's partially because he's, like, agreeing with her. The other thing is she probably wanted him to change her mind or something. There's nothing he could do to make her happy. Uh, going back to last night's issue, she left crying and blaming me again. And of course, everything's your fault. He says, story time. I feel like she isn't getting a completely fair shake in all this. I made this read specifically about her anger towards me for moving out, but I'm not innocent in our relationship and have been far from the perfect husband. This will be a long read, so feel free to ignore. So I immediately upon reading this started thinking, "This is this the part where the guy is going to say, you know what? It's far easier to, to try to figure out what I was doing wrong to justify her actions rather than come to terms that she's nuts. You know, I've done that in the past when I was much younger. A girl would start backing away from me or treat me badly, and I, it must be something I'm doing because I can't be wrong about her and her personality and her character. One of those deals. I'm going to cover how and why we got married, our perspectives on, on a marriage, and a brief timeline that led us here. Oh, goody. My perspective on a healthy marriage is we are each confident in ourselves. We want each other and not need each other. We support each other and cheer each other on. We are there to help bring out the better versions of ourselves. We listen, emphasize, and respect one another. Well, that sounds great. That, that's an ideal situation. The problem is this guy is a giver. She's a taker. And obviously, he's not getting what he needs out of this. Her perspective that I learned much later is that we need to create a family together. Not with kids, but that we have a life project such as having the same jobs or hobbies. That we are always with each other in every moment. You can't have a couple that's always with each other in every moment. They're going to be at each other's throats. People need to have some space for their hobbies and interests and, you know, you get the point. Then we move slowly in life 
An example she likes to use is that if we're walking in a park, there should be moments where we see a beautiful plant and sit there and contemplate the plant. Okay, Miss California 2024. Yeah, when I walk through the park, I'm not going to stop and say, ooh, look at that bush over there. Let's sit here like a bunch of potheads and spend 45 minutes talking about the fucking bush. Unless the bush can talk like in Three Amigos or something. I just thought of that movie now. There's nothing to talk about about a fucking plant. Again, Miss... I want to find myself, find my way. Miss Photography, remember she was looking for a new career. Photography, art, planting, gardening, all this other shit. Let's stop and look at the fucking plant and talk about it for 45 minutes. Uh, they were always, they, that we were always on the move exploring our surroundings. That we have the same schedules as in when she gets up, I get up. And when she goes to bed, I go to bed. That's called being pussy whipped. Time to... You got to get up now because I'm getting up. You got to go to bed because I'm going to bed. No, it doesn't work that way. She just wants someone to boss her around. Some people view our relationship as a hallmark story. She was a foreign exchange student in my, at, at my dad's house 22 years ago. I lived with my mom and would visit my dad. She was a foreign exchange student staying at the house. so they, they, the, His family was the host family for her. I got to tell you, she's probably like, ooh, this is a good way to become a citizen. We had crushes on each other, and she invited me to, to the prom. We, did, we dated very briefly before she went back to her home country. We fell in contact when we went to college. Fast forward 15 years, my dad had cancer, and he is going to die. I reach out to her asking if she wants to say any goodbyes. We start talking a lot, and she decides to come to see him in person. We fall madly in love, brought us back to our teenage years. My dad recovers, or so we think. We want to stay together and not worry about long distance so we get married. Two weeks after that, my dad died. I try to be the stable person for my family and never really had a chance to grieve, nor did I go to therapy. So, they had a crush on each other. They went to the prom and then high school age. Then for 15 years, she's gone. And then he reaches out to her when the, when the dad gets sick and she comes to see him. And then without any real time together, they get married. How stupid is that? Okay, how she was as a teenager and how she is a grown-ass woman in her very early 30s is going to be night and day. I mean, certain qualities aren't going to change. You need to spend years with someone, truly getting to know them through the good and the bad. And clearly that didn't happen here. I'm sure she's just so mesmerized by her beauty and all these other things. It's just ridiculous. Nobody with a brain would rush into things unless they think this is like a movie. Well, these love stories and movies, Hallmark things, that's great on screen, on your television, but in real, real life, it doesn't work that way. And if you behave like that, you can really get hurt. Uh, <clears throat> when we first got together, I didn't need to work very much. We were very phys active physically and mentally. <laughs> active physically. Now, I want to th I'm thinking, obviously, hooking up a lot, unless he means going and looking at more goddamn plants and trees to talk about for 45 minutes. A few months after my dad died, we went on a road trip with friends, and one of them died in a motorcycle accident. You guys are bad luck. People are dropping like flies around you. I felt like I was surrounded by death. I didn't go to therapy, and I reverted in into a computer screen. I play a lot of games to distract myself. We still did a lot of things together and traveled a fair amount, but not up to uh, her standards. Her standards? Now, okay, they're, they're married, and both both parties are allowed to have interests and hobbies and things they want to do. But this whole her standards thing, giant red flag there. Well, there are a lot of red flags. I didn't really explore the city much with her and wasn't good at getting her involved in my circle of friends. At one point, I told her it's important she makes her own friends. My friend circle at the time were all co-workers. She expressed her concerns to me about gaming and exploring, exploring the city, and I took what she said seriously. I said I needed help working through this and want her patient and support. I unfortunately didn't get that. So this guy was obviously depressed from his dad dying, good friend dying. He's kind of lost, so he kind of lost himself in gaming and stuff like that. Now, I will admit, if no grown-ass fucking man should be spending tons of times playing games and stuff like that. I always get shit about that, but I fucking mean it. It's the truth. And so she's really neglected. There's a fair argument there. But again, it seems like this relationship was more her way or the highway. You know? And again, talking about plants for 45 fucking minutes. 
Fast forward, I think things are getting better. When I ask her, she says that things are better, but in reality, she's harboring loads of resentment. Oh, boy. Pa the pandemic hits. We're with each other 24-7, and I work remote. Pandemic was kind of fun for the first six months. We created a cafe in our back patio where we, where we were the only guests. We had Netflix, Netflix binge days. Those days of the pandemic, and depending where you live, where you're more isolated than others, that either brought people closer together or really drove them apart when they got to be around their spouse 24-7. Board games and family Zoom calls. I'm getting bored out of my mind, and at some point I play a lot of games again. I think this is okay because she's watching TV, handcrafts, etc. Later I find out she wants us to be doing a family project together. Not something we're both interested in, but something she is passionate about. So in this case, breakfast was extremely important to her. So I made adjustments to get up earlier to start making breakfast with her. Well, I have no problem with that. And then again, if, she, if you're always on your goddamn video games or computer games, whatever the, the hell they call them now, I can't see if she has issues with that. But the thing is, is that going back to the main story, she claimed she wanted to leave him because she to find herself. Was it he was? He wasn't making money on her and all that. I and mean, a lot of people, including me, have very questionable about there wasn't another guy behind the scenes and all those other stuff here. But you can tell there's things about her. But these things he's describing here doesn't make him the devil. Doesn't make him deserve the treatment that she gave him in the first story here. That That's the thing, you know. Uh, the theme here is that if she bothered was bothered by something, I do my best to adjust within reason. I'm far from perfect in this, this, and I do fail, but always try again. I'm a fairly introspective person and want to become a better human being and husband. While I got no problem becoming a better man and improving yourself and all that, I'm all about self-improvement. But there's another thing when it's trying to improve yourself to make somebody else happy. And that's what nice guys do. They, they shift who they are or try to form themselves to be what their wife or girlfriend's standards. When you need to be who you are. You know, end of story. They, she got together with you knowing who you are. But the thing is, so many women test guys and they try to change the guys. And the guys that will willingly change for them, their clothes, the music they listen to, what they like to do, hang out. They stop, they stop doing the things they enjoy. They stop hanging out with their bros. Those guys think they're doing what the, the girl wants and they're actually turning the girl off. And a lot of women, all women test. And I think she's just seeing what she can get away with this guy. Uh, the main issue overall with this is that even when I just, she still holds resentment. See? Of course she holds resentment. One, there's no making her happy. And two, you're acting like a nice guy. Nice guys change for the woman. Bad boys or, or assertive guys don't do that. This is who I am. You don't like it? Tough. The whole theme of this first story I, I did earlier today, the video I did earlier today, was he kept just doing anything twisting himself around into a pretzel to make her happy and bending over backwards for her and built up resentment over you because nobody respects a kiss ass. Also a bit of important information, my wife has some, some medical issues that knocks her out of commission for about five to seven days a month. What? What medical condition knocks her out of commission five to seven days a month? 15 to 20% of the month she's out of commission and you know, she's bipolar. Did you, were you aware of this when you uh, proposed to her and she's leaving you and, and the life you're providing her? Every time this has happened for the past six years, I take care of her. Physical necessities like food, medicine, massages, and emotional necessities like listening, comfort, supports, lots of hugs. Well, he's very loving towards her and, and taking care of her. That's great. And yet she still harbors resentment. Four years into our marriage, my 13-year-old my dog is diagnosed with congestive heart failure. Aw. I've had my baby girl since she was two months old. I spent a lot of time taking care of her and thousands, and thousands on vet visits. Yeah, I'm used to that. I start not going on trips, not going out for some activities, and generally staying home a lot. Going, going to dinner and under three-hour events were fine, but I generally didn't leave my dog alone for very long. That dog came before her, all right? And that dog is your child, and you have limited time. I've spent a lot on my cat, cats. My second cat got a big lump in his neck a month ago, and it might be a tumor. They haven't been able to identify it unless they do certain uh, MRIs 
and a, a biopsy and all that. And at 14 years old, they just don't want to do it. So I have two cats now that have problems. And the first cat is doing fantastic. I mentioned her on my other channel. I, lots of vet visits constantly. The, the first cat is doing great now, all things considered. Treatments and all that. I can't go too far. And nobody's going to get in the way of my cats. They're my children, you know. And right here, I get, and she's going to have resentment for this. Because we are home so much, I would entertain myself and my wife went out with friends or she was doing things. But she had grown resentful more that we weren't doing anything because of the dog. Tough shit, honey. That dog was before you and uh, dog comes first. This happened for two years. She felt like she sacrificed her life to come to a country she didn't want to be in or liked. That it would be okay if I gave her uh, the attention she deserved and she felt alone. Who forced her to come to this country? Who forced her to stay? You didn't. Come on here. She's a grown-ass woman that can make her, own, make her own choices here. What a load of crap. Now, I can see you being kind of bummed if you can't go anywhere very often because the pet result needs special care. But if she truly loved you, she would know how much the dog meant to you. This broke my heart. When my dog died, I was a mess, but I vowed to build a better family with her. I'm sorry about your dog, dude. We traveled for close to three months. We started planning to move somewhere and start exploring the world. I thought things were going great. I wasn't playing games anymore. We were very active again physically, and we were planning for the future. Then she dropped a divorce uh, on me a few days after my birthday. After your birthday, huh? So she got her extra three years of travel and all that. You thought everything was great. But nope, she's harboring resentment towards you, and here we are to the present where she needs to go find herself and all that. Well, I say let her find herself. Because remember, guys, in the first video, she didn't want his money or anything like that. And it's like, sure, sign the dotted line. You don't get any of my money or the properties or anything like that. After seeing all the comments about Bipolar 2, I think it's always been an active part of a relationship. I've seen this pattern before, but I thought it was my fault. Smack. It's not your... I should have smacked him a few times before. I'm off today. It's Saturday. It's not always your fault. But narcissists and people that tend to have bipolar think that everybody else is the problem. I don't need medication. I don't need therapy. Nothing wrong with me. I've had a hard time distinguishing what a normal relationship is and what is not at this point, or if I'm not a piece of shit or not. From the outside perspective, our friends and family think I'm extremely good to my wife because you've been extremely good to her. I'm not saying you're not. You're just too good to her. From her perspective... Uh, no, due to much depending on her mood. Her mood. This is a very high-level overview, but, over but hopefully gives more context and empathy towards her. Uh, no, you're not getting empathy towards her, okay? No. Thank you, for everyone, for your input. I read every single comment and message, though don't have the time to respond to all that. All this feedback gave me pause and encouragement. The overwhelming majority of you have been supportive and practical. I'll be applying what I've learned in the meantime and frequent therapists more. I move out next Thursday and we'll be, provide an update on how things go. When I'm settled, wish me luck. Well, thank God you're finally moving out. So, bro, I know I was tough on you in the first video and I'm tough now too. But look, no, this is on her. You were too nice. That's the problem. But you know what? You, you obviously meant well and you didn't know any better and didn't know her well enough before you got married. But what's done is done. But you're way too, from what you told the story too accommodating, too nice, always asking her this, asking her that, her opinion on this or what she wants instead of leading. Women want a man to lead. But that seems like there was no making her happy. It was her way or the highway. Yes, you're, you know, after your dad died and your friend died, you kind of lost yourself in video games and all that. And people had their coping mechanisms. But and then your dog, your poor dog getting sick and you had to have that constant care for two years. You couldn't really go anywhere, which I get completely. If she truly loved you, she would have understood. It was always about her. And she's obviously got mental issues. And I don't know what the hell this is about her for five to seven days a month being out of commission, if you will. And you were there by her side. No, dude, you need to work on yourself about being too giving and, and all that. Maybe a little bit of a, what's the term? Codependent. But still... This isn't your fault. She is an a-hole. She's effed up, and you need to accept that and move on. What I think you're doing is what I used to do, and a lot of guys do, is things go wrong with your girl, and you don't want to accept the fact that she's not the person that you thought she is or was, and so you start looking for anything that you did wrong to cause a situation because you don't want to ever think that she's anything but perfect when she's not perfect, you know, and it wasn't anything you were doing wrong. The only thing you were doing wrong is just being too nice. 
but yet gave her everything and, and she's no making her fucking happy. So, bro, yes, move out, start over, get the divorce going, regardless of whether she likes it or not, and move the hell on. End of story. And there's a lot of us that watch the video, you know, that's yeah, from earlier, I think that she's got something going on on the side. I wouldn't rule that as, as impossible either. But at this point then, if she doesn't want any of your assets or money, fine. Fine. She's not your problem. You can't fix her. Nice guys, white knights think they can fix all these damaged souls. It's not your place. And then move on with the divorce and continue on your life. And before you get any relationships, make sure you don't make the same mistakes twice rushing into a relationship or marriage with some woman you barely know and you barely knew her let's be honest you had the memory of your childhood and you went through this hallmark movie shit real life is not a fucking hallmark movie that's why it's the movies and uh do some work on yourself so you don't be so the nice guy white knight in the, for the future woman because if you do in varying degrees the same crap will happen again so i wish you all the best i know i'm tough i know it's very tough in the video but, but i have a I have a tough love approach towards guys, and you got to be tough and knock some sense to them, otherwise it doesn't go through the thick skull. I wish you the best, brother. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.